Good morning and welcome back to another video and today we are going to be going over five farms which are on the rise. Now just stick around and enjoy the video. Okay so today we're going to be going over which farms are on the rise at this moment in time i.e. gold per hour and all of that jazz and pretty much which ones you should be watching at this moment in time as we run up towards the pre-patch. That being the case, let's get into number one, which is, at no surprise, is exotic leather. Now, coming in at number one, exotic leather is pretty damn good in order to farm up. All you need is a skinner, of course, and all you need to do is go over to the Isle of Giants. Now, the Isle of Giants is situated within Pandaria, and it is at the top north part of the Kulai Summit. Now, all you have to do really to get there is either get the flight path in order to fly over there or you can also just get on a flying mount and fly over there. Bear in mind that you will get dismounted as soon as you reach the island as it is a no-fly zone so just bear that one in mind right there. The next thing of note that I would recommend however is when you're actually farming this up you're going to get quite a lot of giant dinosaur bones. Now you could always run into the cave on the far left hand side of the actual map which is a guy called Kumar and basically you can turn this into a spirit of harmony as a daily thing. You can also get the bone white primal raptor through that if you haven't got the mount already or you could also sell those giant dinosaur bones on the auction house. At this moment in time, giant dinosaur bones are seeming to be on the rise and paired with the exotic leather farm increases the amount that you're going to be getting from this as you get the giant dinosaur bones from the actual dinosaurs and also the leather from the giant dinosaurs. Now, that being the case, don't forget to kill on Dasta for your daily thing because she can drop a load of giant dinosaur bones in one go and it is well worth your time and you have a chance of getting a mount as well. So that is something you may want to bear in mind right there. Coming in at number two is albino cave fish. Albino cave fish can actually be farmed up within deep home and it is situated in any of these areas on the map right now. Basically, fly over to any of the pools and just fish them up. You can however do a static farm where you just sit yourself down somewhere and just fish at the pools but you're just going to get a load of fish that you're not really going to sell. So what I would recommend however is to fly around and fish only specifically in the pools. I know this is a little bit tedious but if you enjoy fishing this is well worth your time as the albino cave fish usually on average sell for a decent amount of gold depending on the majority of different realms. Now with that being said, the thing of note that you may want to bear in mind when it comes towards the albino cave fish is it can be turned into deep stone oil. So after you've done your hours worth of farming, if it's more profitable to actually craft those into deep stone oil, you can using an alchemist. Now alchemists can do this through their obviously Cataclysm Alchemy. In the case you have a chance of creating one or two out of one albino cave fish for one or two potions. So that is something to increase your gold right there and at this moment in time um, it's actually seeming to be quite profitable to turn it into the oils as not many people really want to spend that much time when it comes to crafting the Vial of the Sands to get the albino cave fish as you only need eight required to actually make the mount so this is something that you could capitalize on by taking advantage of people's laziness when it comes towards the Vial of the Sands because they'll spend so much time like farming up the materials and then they've got that one little bit of material and then like that's not really worth it for me I just buy it off the auction house and that is where you can capitalize on that because a lot of people are actually crafting these Vial of the Sands at the moment and the majority of the time don't really want to go farm up the albino cave fish. That is something you may want to consider if you want to do a fishing farm. Now coming in at number three is dark iron ore. Now dark iron ore is the best farm for that is in molten core. This is where you will run into this raid and you will run along the edges pretty much just mining all of the dark iron ore. Be do remember, in order to effectively farm this, you do not need to kill any of the bosses. If you kill any of the bosses, you cannot reset the instance, so bear that one in mind right there. However, 
The Dark Iron Ore deposits can be found all over the actual raid and if you do it right and be able to actually run out and reset the instance once you've farmed up all of them all of the deposits you can then reset those deposits and then get more for that hour's worth of farming however if you do have a character like a druid that is your miner you can then use dream walk ability to jump in and out and reset the instance and save yourself a very long trip back to the entrance of this actual farm now that being the case, Dark Iron Ore sells for a really hefty amount of gold and the only thing that I would say you may want to consider is by smelting it into Dark Iron Bars. Maybe double check that before you post those on the auction house as they usually sell at the same rate as each other. So it's something to consider if it sells for a lot more as the bars instead of the ore. That's the only thing that I would suggest. Aside from that, you do get blood of the mountain from these deposits and take out the molten destroyers which are inside of there which drop the blood of the mountain also. This does not affect your lockout at all and you can do this as many times in the out and you can do this 10 times in an hour but to be more frank, you're probably going to be able to get depending on your character, you may not be able to get all those 10 runs in that hour done and it will reset before then. So you may can just do this continuously depending on how fast you can actually farm this up. Now, aside from that, the classes that I'd recommend for this farm is a Druid or, or a Demon Hunter as their high maneuverability. It, actually helps quite a bit with this farm. Now coming in at number four is an alliance only farm and that is the Royal Jelly Farm. Now this one's been on the rise for like the last couple of weeks and this is due to the fact that a lot of people want the actual rep for it but um, you kind of need the rep to actually farm this up effectively. What you really need to do is get a hold of the goggles from the vendor of the Honeyback Hive and then farm up these. You can do this like not with the goggles but it is very much a big help if you do have those goggles because you'll be able to see them like mining nodes and herbalism nodes so that's something you may want to consider going forward but that being the case the gold per hour on this has been increasing ever so slightly each and every day and I've been watching it quite a bit this is where I've actually been taking an active approach in farming this over the last couple of weeks and just stop piling this up as this is a reputation type material and as we move into Shadowlands this is something nice to stock up on because not a lot of people will remember it and there is a nice looking mount locked behind it so people will be well worth paying that just to skip all of the reputation gains from this. Now aside from all of that let's move into number five. Now last on our list is Fjarn Skaggle and it actually came out as a bit of a surprise which is on the rise. Now Fjarn Skaggle can be found in Stormheim within the Broken Isles. This is a legion specific farm and I would recommend having it at rank three. Now when you're actually farming this up this is yeah typically a very easy farm in order to do you do get quite a lot of these like no quite a lot of fiance gaggle on farming session and it's quite actually very good i was actually doing a little bit of this yesterday and i found this to be quite easy in order to do basically if you do want to know a route that you could use for this as i know it's kind of hard sometimes to find some decent routes. Worth It already actually has a route inside of it, so all you have to do is press the import button. Remember that you need the routes add-on in order to do this as well. But aside from that, Fiance Gaggle was on the rise and I was actually pretty shocked. But um, other than that, that's probably what I'm gonna be doing. So that being the case, that is the five farms which are on the rise at this moment in time. I, what do you think of these materials? What Do you reckon that they're gonna hold their value or they're going to drop when pre-patch hits? Personally, I think materials are just going to go back up as soon as Shadowlands is released. Pre-patch is kind of like a fluctuation, that's why I'm holding till Shadowlands. But other than that, guys, that is pretty much the video. Have an awesome rest of the day, and I shall see you in the next video, which will be tomorrow.